The subject of this video comes from observing player behavior in SendoQ. But there's a lot more wrapped up in it, and it all really comes back to something I said back in one of the oldest videos on my channel. For those who don't know, SendoQ is an online matchmaking system made by a European competitive player named Sendo. If you don't know who he is, get knowing, because he is a tremendous asset to the competitive Splatoon scene, not to mention having been a top-level player in his own right. Sendo Q gives you the opportunity to queue up with a team of players that you either arrange to meet up with, or that you find on the website before you start looking for opponents. It lets you see which weapons everyone will be running on your team, and confirm whether voice chat will be available. And it gives you time to get into that voice chat and coordinate with them, so unlike the game's solo queue, you are able to play ranked matches with teammates you found online in a coordinated setting. On Sendo queue, you start off unranked, and then after you've played a certain number of matches, the system assigns you a rank based on the win-loss record you have and the ranks of the other players in the lobby. That rank takes the form of a number, but much like a letter grade system, certain ranges for that number, for that power, places you in a named tier. Those tiers being, in order from weakest to strongest, iron, bronze, silver, gold, platinum, diamond, and leviathan. This simplification of your rank becomes important because when your team is looking for other teams to match up against after you have all of your teammates ready to go, it's not going to show you the names of the players you're up against. This is to mitigate various problems including but not limited to win trading. Instead, it's just going to show the aggregate rank of that team. If you're a gold team, for example, you might see that a bronze team and a diamond team are currently looking for matches, in which case you'd know that you'd expect to beat the one team and lose the other, but not really know who any of them were or what their individual ranks look like until after you've lobbied up to play against them. It's this step in the process of finding a Sendoku match that we tend to see some behavior that's not especially conducive to learning and improvement. A lot of players give themselves a goal of reaching a certain rank on SendoQ. To be really thorough, the underlying assumption is that by reaching a higher rank, they will have to improve at the game so they can beat stronger and stronger players, so they can effectively use their SendoQ rank as an approximation of their improvement. Problems arise with this thinking, as a result of minor flaws in the ranking system, at least some of which are unavoidable, mixing with our human psychology. Let's say that last season you made it to silver. If you place into silver again, and you're aiming to reach higher this season, it's easy to decide just to play against bronze and iron teams. They won't give you as many points as beating silver or gold teams, but they will give you some points, and those points are all but guaranteed because you know you're stronger than those teams already. Those small amounts of points can gradually add up if you play often enough that you make it up into gold without playing against teams that challenge you, teams that you learn anything from. It's really tempting when faced with the possibility of failure versus the possibility of an easy win to take the easy win. What we have to remember to do here is to decouple the SendoQ ranking system, which remember can only ever be an approximation of our improvement from our actual improvement at the game. We have to remember that the ranking only tells us something useful if we don't game the system. We also have to remember that the whole purpose of this exercise is to help us improve, and if all you're learning how to do is beat players you can already beat even better, that's not improving you at the task that's going to get you further in tournaments because you're not going to run into those players that you can already beat over and over and over again in a tournament. You're going to eventually run into a team that's much closer to your skill level, that can beat you, and you will need to be able to complete the task of beating them. Now, if your Sendo Q rank determined who you were capable of matching up with, if getting into gold was the only way that you could practice against gold level teams, then that system would incentivize cheesing your way into gold to get that opportunity, and I would totally understand that behavior. That starts to become a fault much more of the ranking system than of the players. But in SendoQ, an Iron Team can challenge a Leviathan Team, and if both parties accept, that match can happen. 
a silver team challenging a gold team should be relatively close, something that both parties are pretty likely to accept. You don't need that extra rank for any reason. All it's there to do is show you your own progress. What's really stopping players from trying to challenge the more difficult teams and risk their points is simply that they're trying to prevent the potential psychological impact of losing. They want to make progress toward a goal, because if they reach that goal, they get to celebrate reaching it, and if they don't reach it, it feels like a failure. What they don't realize is that if you don't learn anything new or start playing differently as a result of your practice, that is a failure to reach your goal. Getting better at something inherently demands your ability to reconsider and reject parts of yourself. It is a process of hurting your ego repeatedly. Because if you can improve, that means you are currently doing something wrong. And to move up the ladder, that something wrong about you needs to go. Like I said way back in How to Get Out of C Rank, a video I made back when the channel was still called Bravest Esports, when we were only just starting to learn what COVID-19 was. It is entirely impossible to learn unless you are humble, unless you are willing to admit that you are wrong about some things and that your execution is not and never will be perfect. Otherwise, you will consider a mistake to be right, or not look for your mistakes in the first place. The goal, then, of squeezing a few more points out of the Sendo Q system to get you from silver to gold can actually incentivize you not to take action that helps you improve. If an iron team isn't strong enough to reveal the parts of your gameplay that are weaker, the parts that you'll need to improve to advance further in a tournament, then that practice isn't worth doing for you, even though the Sendo Q system gives you points for doing so. It's a slight misalignment of the ranking system with the goals of that system, which again is partially unavoidable, because remember the ranking system is an approximation. Now there is value that can come from playing against teams that are at least a little bit weaker than you. If, for example, even a weaker team is nevertheless able to succeed against you in some way. You'll want to take a look at why they were, because a stronger team is definitely also going to find that weakness. Whenever something goes wrong in that match, you've found something that probably needs addressing. It can be good practice against getting sloppy, making sure that, at least on the easy stuff, you are unerringly consistent. Because you know there isn't much that that team should, in theory, be able to do against you but it shouldn't be your primary source of practice, because that simply isn't preparing you to perform your best in any other setting. See what stronger teams manage to exploit about your team, and learn how teams at your level are playing, so you can take those tough but winnable matches near the end of your tournament runs. Don't look at your rank as a one-to-one -one measure of your success. Really, the best measure of your success will always be the skill and knowledge that you're building. Are you consistently swim strafing after firing a lethal number of shots when you weren't before? Are you attentive to your teammates' callouts in ways you weren't before? Is your special consistently getting value when it wasn't before? If you set your goals that way, you'll improve in those areas, and your rank will naturally increase, and faster than it would if you were trying to grind wins against the weakest teams that will accept your challenges. I really like Sendoku, and think it's one of the best things that has ever happened to competitive Splatoon. It goes above and beyond what we could possibly expect of fan-created content. It's something that has a lot of functionality the developers never included in the video game itself. But as a ranking system, and therefore a system of incentives that guides the way we play the game, it's certainly not perfect, and we can't rely on it to be the only source of structure for our improvement as players. We need to be self-guided, set our own improvement goals, and use the system deliberately and thoughtfully if we want to get anything useful out of it.